Um, terrible timeout usage. Terrible timeout usage. I'm not drunk, Mike Nice. I'm actually very coherent. I'm just – it's just disappointing, man. It's very – because you, you're expecting – it's three weeks in. You know, Caleb looked better – to a degree in certain aspects, but it was so up and down because you have moments where he made great throws. And then there's moments where he's overthrowing like crazy. And it's like when you get in these type of games and you lose that much time, especially in the first quarter, because now every possession counts once you get to the sec middle of the second quarter and the third quarter. Now you got to score in the fourth quarter because you can't – everything counts. No, I'm sorry. You just – you you made some bad decisions as far as – um, usage of personnel in this game. I mean, Caleb Williams, yeah, he was bad, but he, you put yourself in a position at the end of the game to win this. You let easy timeout or easy touchdowns off of the board. I think Matt Eberflus did a terrible job calling timeouts in this game. Um, at the at the end of it, I mean, like this this is a game. It was literally impossible for you to lose. Like it was they they were trying to give you the game. And you found a way to lose. And here's here's the bottom line of it for me. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we're now through three games. And DeAndre Swift has still not run over 100 yards in totality this season. You did not run the football well at all. You gave him the football 13 times. You did commit to the run in this game a little bit more. I give you that. Um, ended up rushing the football what is that? Uh, 25 times in this game? That's solid. 25 rushes? That's a solid day rushing. Yeah. That's kind of a little bit more balanced. You right. didn't do enough with it. But I, I just, I, I don't like the positions you're putting guys in. You're running Roma Dunze to the outside. I'm sorry, you're running uh, Roshan Johnson to the outside. You're running uh, uh, DeAndre Swift up the middle. That makes no sense to I me whatsoever. Like I agree with I you. I mean, like, they, it's, they, they, not only did they do everything, and I'm talking about the Colts here, to try and give you this football game, but you did everything to say we don't want it. Well, you like legitimately, you did everything to say we don't want it. You uh, every third and one play, fourth and one in the end zone, you did everything that you could to say that we don't want to be here. And I, what I say at the start of this season, Joe, the number one thing that Shane Waldron needs to do to start: keep it simple, stupid. That's very true. We said kiss. Keep, keep it simple. I, I, You're not keeping it simple. You're trying to reinvent the wheel. You're trying to – and here's the thing. Hey, for everybody who's going, well, why is he running this? Why is he – why are we in shotgun here? Why are we – they're trying to make things easier and similar to what Caleb Williams ran in college. This ain't, this ain't college. This ain't college. That stuff don't work in the NFL. I shotgun think, on fourth and one don't work in the NFL. Yeah. No, I mean, it. there's blame all the way around. Offensive line wasn't necessarily great. The offensive coordinator wasn't good. Overthrows with with Caleb, we had we had drop passes. I mean, Swift was dropping screen. How many passes. passes you think Caleb Williams threw today? Thirty five. Thirty. Did he throw forty? Forty five passes. Fifty passes. Caleb Williams threw fifty-one passes today. You, that's what I'm saying. We couldn't. Caleb even Williams threw fifty-one game. passes today. Hey, hey, look. Technically, on the stat line, three sixty-three, two passing yards, two two interceptions. But it, it took was, you fifty-one passing yards to get over three hundred. That's a Kobe line. <laughs> hey, hey. That's a Kobe line. He Kobe, better, he better Kobe be Kobe, Kobe freaking the, Bryant by the end of this, dog. Like. No, I'm gonna tell 32 you. Thirty-two for me, fifty-one for thirty-six points. Yeah, you know I mean, like, no, I'm gonna tell you this. To me, that that interception that Billing should have had changed the dynamic because but that's so early, though. No, no. But what I'm getting at is that the offense was so trash, and that was a bailout to put them in great position to score. Yeah. Because even to a degree that they might have got a field goal out of that, or maybe they would have scored a touchdown. Yeah. That change because every possession counts because you're every every they're not ready yet. Caleb's not ready yet. He he's had great there's there's been moments where he gets the ball out in certain positions and he's able to make some completions. But those other throws where it was hurting us and killing us, and so every that that one defensive call that was a bad call on the off, on the officiating 
talking about they stopped us for pro progress. That robbed us. But that I think I, I, I agree with you. That's a bad call. That's a bad play. But I think here's the thing. You then can't compound it by calling bad plays yourself. You then can't compound it by putting a guy out there who's literally giving you nothing in DeAndre Swift when De Roshan Johnson's numbers don't look crazy, but it's literally because you weren't utilizing them until the final drive, which on that final drive, you were finally able to score a touchdown because you were using the short passing game and the running game to put you in a very good position like you 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 have to be simple about this it's early on no what was that one where they got sacked they did an end around or something and we lost the ball i think well i mean that's that's the the dj Moore one where yeah. you're trying to do an end around he yeah, loses it was the bad play calling in certain yeah. instances like it it goes it's all the way around of bad stuff going on by the way pat not only do we we got 1200 1300 we 20 away from 1600 like dog it's just it hit the like button if you're in here to me like it, th this comes down to now early on in the game i think here's the thing this is the game of two storylines right early on in the game i don't think shay walter was calling a bad game early on in the game i think caleb williams was missing there were throws that were there to be made, and he absolutely missed them. But then you start to see Caleb Williams, that last drive at the end of the half where you're putting yourself – or was the second to last drive into the half? You're putting yourself in a position to score. You get all the way down to the run uh, – to the one, yeah. and you want run two Shotgun. plays back-to-back -back that and just shot. absolutely have the wrong personnel on them. Yeah, like you're not putting I – mean, you, you, your bell cow is still Roshan. I'm not mad that we have – Swift. The issue is that you're not using Swift in the proper, you know, personnel grouping. Like I, he should be more of a receiver than anything. Yeah, Shout but bro, no, Moore. I'm, I'm sorry, bro. You, per rush. There, there's, there's nothing. I have no use for you on the team at 1.8 yards per rush. Well, I, it's either 2.3, 1.8, whatever. It's terrible. Yeah, I, I have. The, either way, I have no use for you on the team. Yeah. Like you're, you're, you, you're Bayless Jones. Big D. I, I don't want to burn my cap. I, I paid too much for this. Like, I, you're, you're, you're Bayless Jones. You're the Valus Jones of running backs right now. And Valus Jones was also the Valus Jones of running backs. <laughs> the Valus, Valus Jones, by you the way. You know what I mean? Like, no, like, and, but here's the thing. Again, it goes back to you can only do what you're put in a position to do. I'm not saying that DeAndre Swift shouldn't have played better. I'm not saying that uh, that uh, uh, um, Caleb Williams shouldn't have played better in that first half. But I, I am going to say in the second half, that last drive, I'm sorry, at the end, going into the second half, that drive before, you have two opportunities to get into the end zone, and you have nobody that blocks the football out there. That drive that Kayla Williams gets a fumble on. Um, why is Cole Komet blocking La Too Late to? We well, know no, both of them. It was it was it was Komet and uh, I think Everett. And they both no, the other one, Lewis. Was it Mercedes Lewis. Lewis and Komet, and, and they couldn't block La Too Late to. Like, dog, like, it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, what are you doing here personnel wise that you think is logical? By the like, way, like, I, I just, I don't get it. The, the usage through three weeks has been absolutely asinine. Hold, for the record, but just looking at the numbers here, for the record, Caleb Williams is 33 of 52 with 363 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions, with an 80.8 rating, uh, QBR rating. Anthony Richardson was 167 yards passing. With two zero touchdowns, two interceptions, with a thirty nine QBR rating. By the way, just just putting that out there. Yeah, but you know the numbers are are crunch time numbers at the end of the game. What the heck do Buddy got going on here? What are you talking about? Uh, uh, what's his name? Freaking uh, Nate. Uh, that's oh, in the Burleson. middle here. Burleson. Yeah, Nate Burleson. Uh. <laughs> it's like a half suit. Like I like I like the top. Like where they got it cut off right now. Perfect. That bottom blue is crazy. That uh, is terrible. Hey, that's that's horrible, dog. He, I, I, I don't do the no no tie thing. Why why wear it? Why are you wearing a tie bar with no tie? <laughs> yeah, that's nuts. I ain't gonna lie to you. See, but my thing is, I'll do no tie, but you gotta have a chain. You gotta have a chain. <laughs> why wear a tie bar? The tie bar is crazy. The tie bar is crazy with no tie, bro. <laughs> but anyway, dog, like it's it's it's. You're you're in a bad you were in a bad situation already. I think that early on in the game, Caleb Williams put you in that bad situation. I think at the end of the game, your play calling kept you in that bad situation. So there's there's blame to go all the way around for this game. But I'm gonna tell you this right now: through three games, Shane Waldron looks exactly like who every what everybody who had concerns about Shane Waldron in Seattle said.
He looks exactly like Shane Nagy, Shane Getzey, whatever y'all want to call him, however y'all want to go through it. That It's disappointing. I can't it's, it's sad, bro. It's honestly sad that you're you're in this position right now because your your quarterback comes into the season with the exact same struggles that your quarterback had last season. But everybody wanted to ignore those struggles because it was year three. Everybody well, wanted to ignore everything else that was the problem on the team because it's year three. He's supposed to get it right. Everybody wanted to ignore all of that about the team. Oh, no, that's not the problem. It's just Justin Fields. Well, what's the problem this year? Well, the thing with What's Justin, the problem now? But, but the problem with Justin is that we're talking year three, year four. We're talking about contracts. We're talking about paying a lot of money to him. So you can't afford some of those things. Joe, now, what what did I, I understand that, but what are the issues with the Bears today? No, no, the, we still have problems. The line again, you're rebuilding. Run them, run, you just said it. The line? The line, offensive coordinator. Play calling. A lot of things. All it's all faces of the offense has been tripping. Yeah, you know I mean, like, like that, like the line and play calling. Yeah. What was the problem last year? Well, Fields is holding the ball to a little bit too much. A hundred percent. We we didn't necessarily establish a running game because Justin Fields was the running he game. was the running game. So, and it was still bad play calling and a bad offensive line to a degree. Yes, that, not to a degree. The offensive line was bad. It's the same line. Yes. No, well, well, well Cody White here. Whatever. You got rid of Cody White here and Lucas Patrick and, and Nate Davis is the same. You're yes. three weeks into the season and you bench Nate Davis. Your starting center is still getting pushed around. He was a little bit better today. I give him credit because he's been he been face down back up. He's a little bit better today. <laughs> but, I mean, he's been, he been looking bad out there. I, he, he's, he's a little bit better today. No. But, like, it, it's, it's still like – the frustration to me. Joe, really, how many years we've been having this conversation? How many years we've been talking about O-line play? I'm, I, you, know, you know how I feel. I know. I'm just saying. Like, it's just, I'm, it's not you. I'm just having the conversation. Like, I'm sick of, it's I'm like sick of having me. the same conversation. I know. It's, it's frustrating. And the thing is that we have growing pains that we got to go through because we have a rookie quarterback, and then we got a coordinator where it's like, I don't know. I mean, the whole point is if he's a quarterback whisperer, with, with for Geno Smith, that's what we're all banking on because technically, most of the most of Breeze Nation is right. I kind of want to Clint, Clint Kubiak. I'm gonna go with the Kubiak Shanahan tree, but the thing is that Waldron comes from that same tree too. So it's not like we weren't getting a derivative of this offense, but the coaching. But there was there was also bad throws. That one throw when when Caleb rolls out to the left and throws a beautiful pass that's ten yards ahead of Rome. That's on that's on him. That's the yeah. improvisation that we were supposed to be getting from Caleb too. So in that play, it's Caleb. But then this play, it's a stupid play where we're going to run swift up the middle and we don't get anything. I'm with you, Ja Reacts. Hey, listen, no listen. More. I'm not bringing up Justin. I'm bringing up last year's problems. But I'm not bringing up Justin. I'm bringing up last season's problems. Last season's problems with this team were offensive line problems up the middle. You went into the draft knowing that. Last season's problems were play calling. You went into the draft knowing that. And the difference was because Justin could run the ball, but by the way, they coached him out of running last year, but because he could extend plays, because what would happen is he would hold the ball a second too long. 100%. And then when the play breaks I down, he got he himself run out. He well, got he himself hurt. When he broke his thumb, that was his fault. But, but, but the point was he would run out. Caleb's not trying to do that. Caleb's not necessarily running away to, to run for first downs if he doesn't have to. He wants to throw the ball. The idea is that – but the point is, to your point, having a better scheme, having better personnel and a better offensive line, but mind you, we still got a rookie quarterback because there's certain throws, there's nothing we can do. Because you, there were calls – I think plays that were called correctly that he didn't make the throw for. And then there's other times where bad play calling. But but I think that's the thing. You can't have the poor play calling and have a rookie quarterback going through growing pains. I, well, I you, can, you. You, can, right. you can call the right play that makes the play calling easier for you for when a rookie quarterback has those moments. You know what you don't do? Run a triple option on the one and... Look. 
Now you got Caleb Williams making a tough decision where I can either take it in or I pitch it or I throw the pass out here when all of those are covered. That don't work in the NFL. Do, There's huh? a reason teams aren't really running the triple option. And, I, again, it's not a Fields thing. It's not a Justin thing. It's a you had the same problems yeah. last year, and you're still dealing with those same issues today. Yes, you are going to go through the rookie quarterback growing pains, but you're supposed to have an offensive coordinator that was going to say, okay, well, while he's going through these growing pains, I'm going to scheme this up very easy so that the offense can get in. Well, I don't I'm going to go with the – like. You didn't you didn't let DeAndre Swift run the football in for a touchdown, was it two weeks ago or last week? Two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. You, you didn't have it. Khalil Herbert ran it in. DeAndre Swift still ain't got a rushing touchdown. Why is it in that moment we're trying to force DeAndre Swift into that? Well, like I it, it, those are the things to me that irritate me about what we saw today. And that's it's my biggest problem with where we at right now. Like I, I understand you want to try and force the square pegs in a round hole right now and stick with it. And you don't want to make these changes and you don't want to move on from these changes and you paid them $8 million. So you got to stick with them. But look, you, you already benched Nate Davis because of his struggles after three years. Uh, you, you're, you clearly can see that Deandre Swift is struggling right now. You need him out there in more of a passing down situation than in rundown situations. Anyway, use what's working for you in this moment. You can always go back to the drawing board and practice and say, okay, we need to figure Figure something else out for you to run a touchdown. Also, to, to the, run well. For the record, Herbert is paid one million dollars a year. By the way, oh, is he? Just... Are you are you telling me that Khalil Herbert makes seven million dollars less <laughs> than DeAndre Swift? Is that what you're telling me? Just, I, is that what you're want, saying? I just wanted every down back. That's is all that I'm what want. you're saying? <laughs> no, because it because th- that's the thing though. It's it's like. Right now in this game, it's not working. It don't mean it can never work. And this is my problem with the OCs we've had. Right now in this game, you need to do what works. Right now in this game. Go back to practice and figure out something with Swift. Go back to the drawing board and figure it out. I'm not saying you can't adjust. Yeah. But right now in this game, you didn't adjust. No, there was – the problem is offensive line – like. Everything is about a rhythm and a flow. That lot too late to sack killed us. That killed us. Whatever the yeah, play calling was. The who called the personnel on that? I, I got you. That's, not, that's what I'm saying. Like, every possession counted. And that, do you had a chance to win that game again? It's like the bear, they're in it. I'm just tired of us being on the, the recipient of the, the, the bad end of this thing. Yeah. They had a chance to win it last week, and they screwed up. And it's like they're not. Uh, the coaching, the line play, all of it was just bad. Now, technically, that wasn't on Caleb. Let Latu hit that ball, whoop, clean, got it out of there. I mean, it's you on know. Caleb. You got to recognize the pressure. No, he's – dude, no. he. That's not really on him. He had a technically a clean pocket. There were moments where, where, where Caleb had a clean pocket. Yeah, and he was able that to – That play look. was actually clean. Old boy comes around. He got him – as he's getting ready to throw it, that was just perfect timing. That was just a great play. That had nothing to do with Caleb. I'm not blaming Caleb for that. Now, whether but, but you do have to recognize the pressure coming off of the edge. Yeah, but my point is that whether that's shame, why are you putting two tight ends on a defensive end like that? I don't like it's, that. In Again, the middle back, at back the end of the Walsh. game. Right. Yeah, but this is, this is when the game counts. And you pretty much that pretty much sealed us. So no, that comes down to play calling, protections, whatever else that you're doing. Like I'm watching the play right now where where um uh, the 49ers with uh with Brock Purdy. I mean, blocking is they're pushing the guys away from him where yeah. the, the line is getting collapsed in. The line's got to do a much better job. Period. You get a man some time, he can do his thing. He's still a rookie, but when you give him time, that's the mid times when he looks really good. I just, to me, at, at the end of the day, the the problem that I have is just. Uh, Caleb is going to go through his rookie growing pains. A three hundred and fifty. If you told me today. We come out of this with a 350-yard, three-touchdown performance day, and Caleb Williams throws two of them. With two interceptions, I'd have been like, rookie day, you got to eliminate the mistakes, but you know what? You you found a way to get it done. But your play calling shot you in the foot all day. Your play, play calling. calling, your offensive play calling put your defense back out on the field in situations it didn't need to be in. Your offensive play calling 
uh, uh, absolutely just was was dog water in the red zone consistently. Like, it I was, mean. Well, if you had three phases, it was offensive line play, it was quarterback play, and offensive line. And they all were pretty much either average or below average. So, and actually, I'm going to give the Lions some credit. There were times where, Clint, where Caleb had a clean pocket. But the, the play calling was like suspect, and Caleb definitely had a bunch of throws that he no, could have to me, to me, we wasted half, the whole fourth quarter. The first quarter was was terrible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. To me, the first half is on Caleb Williams. The first Caleb Caleb played a horrible first half of football. Yeah. Um, the second half, to me, is on Lou, or, uh, basically Luke Gessie, Shane Waldron. Because you had so many opportunities where you just put your quarterback. You here's my problem: you're putting your quarterback, and it's all on you situations. Well, when you're throwing fifty some times, yeah, you're putting your quarterback in. It's it's your ball game. It's all on you. He's he's in his rookie year. Thirty passes, I get. You should be throwing thirty passes. Yeah, you should be throwing thirty you passes. About 30, 30 Fifty-one split. passes on the rookie. But Fifty-one they, passes and not and not a look to Roshan Johnson's way until again in the fourth quarter. But once you, and the thing is, once you start using Roshan, you actually got some movement. He got yak. He was actually like like what are you not seeing that says okay we got to use. I told what were we talk about during the week. I'm like I'm fine having Swift out there, use him as a pat as a receiver, but I would start both of them, Roshan yeah. and Swift. That way, now you got you got a guy that can chip block and do something. Like, why are we still seeing Mercedes Lewis out there? We shouldn't see him. We should see Rochelle. I mean, Mercedes Lewis is only out there for blocking purposes, but no, I don't want to block it against him. I'd rather do, have out there. Yeah, no, here's the thing. You do need a, a dude like Mercedes Lewis out there to block, but I don't want him blocking a lot too late, too. I'm, <laughs> right, but my point is, if you don't want to block him, he doesn't need to be out there. I want him in the backfield blocking the 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 guy that sneaks his way through and you bow. You just get, give him a little pop. I don't want oh. him like, hey, I need you on the line like an offensive lineman. Like, you know what I mean? I like Crimson. He's like, stop it. Get some help. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> stop it. Stop it. Get some help. Get some help. I don't well, know, man. We, we're, we're another year away from getting help. We got to get, you know, we, we still need to go through the draft and get players, linemen, <laughs> and all that stuff. My boy, my boy Ken just sent the he sent the gif of uh of <laughs> the remember in uh in Endgame when when he meets his daughter when uh uh Thanos meets his daughter and he's like <laughs> it says is Illinois ranked? <laughs> it's like yes. It's like, what did it cost? Everything and it's the Bears, the Sox, and the Cubs and the Bulls in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I don't know, bro. Like it, this. You you got a long way to go. This was a loss that I did not expect this team to get. None of us expected that. Um, I, I I didn't know how you could. I'm telling you, I watched the tape. I didn't see a way you could lose this game. I'm going to be honest with you. I just watched this game. I really don't know how the Bears lost this game. Like, Anthony Richardson did not kill you. Jonathan Taylor cooked, but you kind of contained him. For a good chunk of the game, outside of some big plays, well, like you, you, you can't keep the defense out there. I told y'all that's what I've been saying all the time. If you can sustain some drives and keep the defense fresh, there's only so much they can do. You keep the defense out there, and now you're getting them, you know, uh, susceptible to injury. And there's going to be times they're going to break a play because they've been out there. There's so many times where it's like them third and third, you know, they now even convert on third, uh, convert third down conversions. And you're not able to sustain drives. And so yeah. even when they were giving you gifts, they gave you gifts that you still could do something. Like the offense definitely took a step back this year. Yeah. You gotta do, you gotta do way better. And you had a you this is a very winnable game. Now, I do see improvement. We did get a Caleb touchdown. We got Caleb touchdown to Rome. Got two Caleb touchdowns. We got Caleb thrown for 300 some yards. I would subtract, what was that, 50 yards or seven, 60 yards? Technically, because that that catch to the, in the end zone that I mean, I ain't uh, subtracted nothing. We don't get uh, we don't get uh. I'm just saying, but actually, <laughs> 300 yard quarterbacks. Hey, I'm yeah. counting all of them yards. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I take it, but technically, I mean, he was really more like two something, which is still a very good stat line. Hey, hey, listen, do, do those yards count if DJ Moore uh, goes another inch? Hey, look, Crimson, nobody's – I don't believe the Colts are a good team at all. We were supposed to beat no, this team. No, I, I think like the Colts are water. 
I get that. No, we're supposed to beat this. No, team. I think the Colts are dog water. And guess what? I think that we are we are below dog. What's what's after dog water? The the Bears right now are dog piss. That's bubonic. What... It's bubonic water. <laughs> uh <laughs> super chat said this coaching staff is cheeks, bruh. Bears <laughs> ran it over 80 plays on offense and almost got blown out. I w- they didn't get blown out. They didn't get blown out, but it was a it's struggle bad, that they did not need to have because they it's just bad. Have- it's hey, just really? bad. We'll be talking about it more on the Daily Show tomorrow. Me and Jordan JC for the Morning Breeze. Of course, me and the Full Breeze crew uh, uh, this e- or uh, Sunday. I don't even know where we at no more. Tomorrow, Monday tomorrow, night. Tomorrow. tomorrow night. Uh, as we will be in the studio live for the show. Appreciate you guys for tuning in and showing love. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. Lead a five-star review. Y'all know what to do. For the super producer, Joel Holt. It's your boy, Pat, the designer. Back at it again. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bed down. One love. One Peace. love. Oh, sweet Jesus.